God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading.
forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As she is worthy, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, but you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and every day of prayer and supplication. To that end, be alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador of chains, praying that I may declare it boldly as I must be. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
because of this, many of his disciples returned or turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. with the same. 
separating the metaphorical from the literal? What is Jesus, Jesus alluding to, and what is he literally saying? Jesus' teachings on his flesh being the body, being real food, and his blood being uh, as fluid, being drink, is hard to take literally. And if you eat my flesh, and he says, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will live forever. This left sounds like something that would come from some of the recent teenage vampire books and movies uh, that have been out. There are disciples who don't, but there are some disciples who don't get it, or they don't want to understand it. Like Luke's gospel, Jesus has followers beyond his core group of twelve. It is these peripheral disciples who are struggling to accept this teaching. They don't stick around long enough to see that Jesus connects bread and wine to his body and blood at the Last Supper. A couple of weeks ago, I preached on the Anglican Episcopal understanding of the real presence of Jesus in the bread and the wine. It is spiritual food for those who believe. So this makes Jesus' statements about his flesh and blood being food from heaven is both metaphorical and literal. The other part of this teaching that these disciples won't accept is Jesus stating that he originated from heaven. In verse 38, which was, I think, last week, I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of the one who sent me. And in verse 42, he says, and they say, in response, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Because of these teachings of the peripheral disciples, they reject Jesus and stop following him. But this is part and parcel to the whole theme of the Gospel of John. In the opening chapter, we're told that Jesus, as the, as the Christ, was not of human origin. It says he was in the beginning with God. He came to, down to what was his own. His own people did not accept him. But to all who accept him, who believe in his name, he gives power to become children of God. Simon Peter makes his confession of faith. When asked by Jesus of the twelve disciples, do you also want to go away? Peter answers, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One. The key words in this confession are believe and know. Those who walk away refuse to accept and believe or to know that Jesus is the Son of God. The twelve that remain are willing to believe and accept this teaching as self-evident truth. The question then becomes, are we willing to accept this teaching? Jesus is the Son of the living God, and his body and blood represented in the bread and wine of the Holy Communion are spiritual food to feed the soul to eternal life. Or is this a ditch you are willing to die in? Or would you walk away ashamed of these beliefs if challenged by the standards of the world? The Apostle Paul calls it a spiritual battle against cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces in the heavenly places. Paul uses the analogy of a Roman soldier equipped for battle, but on the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, appropriate shoes to proclaim the gospel. I'm, you know, maybe pumps, high heels, you know, I'm not quite sure, you know, hiking boots, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I said it before and I'll say it again. Satan, the fallen archangel, has his own spiritual army and spiritual weapons. And primarily they are doubt and despair. Those disciples who walked away from Jesus' teaching had a little imp sitting on their shoulders, sowing seeds of doubt. Remember Jesus' teaching on the mustard seed of faith, 
that little tiny seed that had the ability to grow into a mighty bush, but also the seed of doubt, is also powerful, but it's not as powerful as that seed of faith. I hope and I pray that we're all here and will remain here as members of St. John's Episcopal Church in Mount Vernon, Indiana, because we are firm in our core beliefs in Jesus Christ. I understand that there are some teachings of the church, especially the Episcopal Church, that we may question as whether or not it's true or applicable to our lives. And that's okay. We can openly discuss such differences. However, those core beliefs, such as Jesus teaches on him being the bread of life and him, him being the Son of God, these we must hold as self-evident truths that we are willing to boldly proclaim and defend to the world. There are broken people outside the doors of this church who need to hear and accept this gospel. Some will accept it, some will walk away. But this is what Jesus tells us. And for those who accept, this is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.
throw out presidents, for the leaders of all nations, for Eric, our governor, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Mount Vernon, for Steve Blair, our mayor, for our surrounding cities and communities, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and culture to serve us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widow and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, we especially pray today for those who are ill. We pray for Lucy Nash. We especially pray for those with special needs. The Sobecks, Reed Brown and family, Jean and Bob Brown, the Silvers, David Taylor, Susan Green, and the Nash family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We give thanks to the Lord for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for the birthday of Amanda Rutherford. And we also give thanks for big brothers and big sisters in Cozy County. Are there other thanks today?
told to be, don't stay down there the whole time. So if I could get people on Saturday afternoon, I'll take a break and maybe go home and take a quick nap or something. I don't know how to do that. So, make Lydia happy. It's not about me, it's about Lydia. As it should
you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally and spiritually into my heart, cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the 